Hello, guys. This is Kene once again, right? Yeah, today we'll continue our discussion on the operators in Python. We've co covered quite um, a number of them. And today we shall be looking at um, two more operators in Python. That is the membership operator and the identity operator, okay? So I'll go straight into it. All right, so speaking of the membership operator, you know, the operation represented by that operator is um, used to simply evaluate the case if the um, element there is simply a member of the group. So the group there could be an, um, could be a list or say a tuple, right? You guys understand? So that's it. And that's simply the in. So that's, now let's look at how the in is used, right? So if I um, created a list, say my list, and initialize that to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, okay. Then I will use a loop there that is to repeat, um, say an operation a number of times. I would create the for, I'll use a for loop for, I in my list, right? So that's it basically. So this I represents each of these entities here at that particular um, cycle. So at the first iteration, I will be one, second iteration, I will be two, third iteration, I will be three and so on and so forth. So the in there, this in is an operator. It's called the membership operator, right? So let's see now. So for I in my list, then simply print the I. Okay, so let's see if that's case. So we see guys, so it goes through the members of the list and prints out each of the values where um, a value at that particular cycle is I. So that's it guys. The in operator, you know, is used to um, determine if the member, the supposed member of a group such as a list is actually a member, right? Then let's look at another type of operator called the identity operator. Now the identity operator is denoted to the use of is, is, that's it. So it just simply checks if two objects, refer, I mean, if two um, terms refer to the same objects. That's what the is does. So I have objects A and object B. I'm gonna use the is to um, determine if those, those um, terms, for the, the terms for those objects, you know, actually refer to the same objects. So let's, let me give a use case here. Suppose I had, um, say, first, let me just call it first one. And then I initialize that as um, four. And then second, second one, I make it, I make it um, seven. Then the third one, I'll make that first one, right? So I'm going to check, guys, we're going to, um, determine something here now. Once C, if the first one 
and the second one refer to the same um, object, refer to the same thing, right? And let's see. If save um, first one is second one. Or let me just simply save it in a variable. Check. Okay. Let's see what's written when I print check. So that's false. We see that first one is not second one, right? Okay. Now let's let's also let's now check if uh, first one is the same as third one. You see that it is true. In other words, guys, these two terms, third one and first one, refer to the same the same objects. Do you understand? Then there's a slight difference between um, the is and the equality operator. Do you understand? So let's see what the difference is. Now I'm going to create some other variable check two. And then I'm going to say maybe a fourth one. Sorry guys, about my use of uh, these terms as variable names. And I would say um, eight, divide that by four. Okay, so eight divided by, eight divided by two. I think that should evaluate to four. Right, so we see that first one seems to be the same thing as fourth one, right? So let's see if that's the case. If that's the case, first one is fourth one. Now simply get this and check two. That's false. So we see that first one is not doesn't refer to the same object as the fourth one even though the values are equal like there's equality four is same as eight divided by two now let me use the equality operator there this way and let me check what the outcome will be see that it is true hey guys i, I need us to understand something you know, we've just seen the difference between the is, that is the identity operator, and this um, comparison operator, that's equal, equal to um, sign, right? In programming, two equal to symbols. If I have four and I have eight divided by two, the two values are equal. So if I just want to test for equality, I'll use this, you know, I'll use the two equal to um, symbols. So four is equal to eight divided by two, right? But you would agree with me that this is one object. First one is one object and fourth one is another object. So the two terms, first one and fourth one do not refer to the same objects, right? That's it. So if I am to um, put is there, I will get false. It will be false, guys. So let's see. That's false. All right. So that's a very quick one um, on these two operators, the membership operator and the equality operator. Let's now move to precedence, which is like part of my lesson on operators in Python. Order of um, the order in which um, expressions are evaluated, right? Those operators um, will come in what order? 
in terms of evaluation. So I'm just going to say have this here and we'll see. So the general rule, I'll just set, I'll just there like guides, right? Guidelines. So I would think of the parentheses first. So this will be evaluated first, then the exponents. Now guys, um, this exponent, you know how we have this, for example, right? And then this as a symbol. So whatever is in parentheses will be evaluated before you know having um, something raised to the power of another, right? Okay, so that's the exponent operator here exponentiation. Now we have a, now talk, um, still in this same level, we'll have the square root as well. So um, the, the order in terms of um, square or square root, that should also come here. Then after that, guys, I would have the division. Now the division would entail things that have to do with division. So that could be the truncated division. Then the modulus and then the typical division, right? And then we'll have multiplication. Multiplication that now has just this as the operator. Then addition and subtraction. I'll just put the two of them together, addition and subtraction. So just in this order kind of, right? Okay, so um, let me comment these lines here of them and move them to the top. Okay, right. Now let's let me let's out them um, just um, on comment each of them. Then we'll see the result you know, of these expressions here. So the first year out just take off the comments. Then I will have print ans. Now I have to set this to ans then just this way. So guys, think about it. What do you think will be the answer? Remember, we can use this as a guide at the top here. Parentheses, exponents. Now still at this point, you may now have the square root, you know. So let's see, eight plus 20 divided by blah, blah, blah. Normally guys, normally um, expressions are evaluated from left to right, normally. But certain operators have higher um, precedence, right, than others. So now you won't now um, take the evaluation from Left to right. Instead, you look. You you would um, take into account the level, the order of precedence in evaluating your expression. So, if I had this, which should be done first? Ordinarily, I should go from eight plus twenty. That's twenty-eight divided by four, seven, seven, multiplied by two, fourteen, fourteen raised to the power of three. 14 by 14 by 14, right? So that should be, but you see, that's not what we're going to get. Um, let me use a calculator. So we just try to get 14 by 14 by 14.
that's 2744, right? 2744. But let's see if that's what we're going to get, 2744. But we got 48. So what happened? Yeah, so guys, this is it. I'm going to act as though they were a, what? This punctuation mark here, the parentheses. So this will be evaluated first, the exponent, and afterwards, the division. Then afterwards, the multiplication. So what is obtained here, 20 divided by four, following two raised to the power of three. You know, so that'll be two raised to the power of three multiplied by 20 divided by four before eight is added to it. So let's take it guys. Two raised to the power of three is eight, right? Two times two times two, eight. Eight times 20 divided by four is five, right? So let's see, um, five times eight. That's 40. Then 8 plus 40. That's why we have 48. So you need to know the order, you know, in which the entire expression will be evaluated. Right. So that's it. So I'll just return this to the original state. And comment this. And I come to this point here, just using these as examples. I'll make this ans this time. Now, what do you guys think? What do you think here now? Five multiplied by eight divided by 10. Now, Python will do this. It's going to do the division first. Then it multiplies the result of that by five. So eight divided by 10, that should be um, four over five. And then four over five multiplied by five, that should be a four. Do you understand? So I'm just doing this like you know, mentally, but then this is the um, procedure. Four over five multiplied by five is four. So let's see if that's what is returned. You see, so we get a four, even though it brings a floating point number, but it's still four. All right. So guys, if I did this, let's see what that would be. Okay, so in this case, guys, there isn't um, a difference. Yeah, because the two of them actually lie in the same um, level of precedence. That's why it seems as though you know, there isn't a difference. But be careful. If there are cases, when there are cases where you wouldn't have the same result, depending on which is done first, multiplication or division, then you need to be careful. Because Python will evaluate the division, will do the division first, then afterwards, does the multiplication, right? So that's what it's like, just what it does. Right, so that's done. Now we take the other one. Here, I'll say this, call it ans. And now let's see guys. So the same thing, eight, 18 multiplied by five divided by six. So it does this first, five divided by six. That's simply five over six times 18. So what does that give? That gives 15. So let's see if that's what it's going to be. 15, right. But what if we had the other this way? 18 multiplied by five, that's 90, right? 
90 divided by 6, that's still 15. So there isn't any difference in this case. All right, so we move on to the next uh, example there. And we'll see what happens, guys. This now, how many operators? One, two, three, four, four operators. In what order should they be um, evaluated? In what order should they be performed? The actions represented by those operators. Guys, remember that since I have, okay, so this is like minus truncated division, multiplication and addition. I'll take truncated division first. So Python will do this. And afterwards, it takes the next one, which is multiplication. What it gets here from floor division of seven by two, it multiplies it by three. Then afterwards, it does, now it doesn't now matter which other addition or subtraction can be done. You know, um, it doesn't matter which is done first where you have addition and subtraction. So I'm not going to bother myself with the parentheses. So seven divided by two in terms of floor division, that will simply be the whole number. Seven divided by two is three. I'm not going to reckon with that fraction, the remainder there. So that's just three. Three raised to the power of, okay, just, no, sorry guys, not raised to the power, three multiplied by three. That's nine, so that's done. Then I think I should just do the addition, right? So um, nine plus one, 10. Then 10 minus 10, zero. So I fail to print the results. So that's answer. So now we are getting a two. Why is that? So in this case, let's see, guys. I will do seven by divided by two, that's three. Three times three, nine. nine. In this case, the subtraction will be done first, right? So 10 minus nine, that's one and one plus one, two. But let's try this again. Seven divided by two, that's three in terms of floor division. Then, so I, I have to correct something here, guys. It, do, it doesn't seem matter which is done first, either subtraction or addition. So this is three, three times three, nine. So guys, I fail to um, consider this minus here. So it's actually, negative nine minus nine. So minus nine plus one, minus nine plus one, that's going to be minus eight. Then it's a minus eight. So that's not, it's not like having 10 minus eight. So 10 minus eight will be two. I hope we get it guys. So it's the same, the same thing. The same thing, you know, it doesn't matter if it's subtraction or addition, but just be careful to, you know, consider the, um, the sign, the positive sign or the negative sign in front of that digit. Okay, all right. So we go to the next. So we have here 17 minus eight. So I'll start with the plus minus eight. Please guys, always consider this operator here now, this minus here, okay? So this will be taken. The negative of eight is minus eight, right? So um, minus eight plus six, that should be minus two. 
then I would now have 17 minus two. 17 minus two is 15. Let's see, 15. Great, now let's try this now. Evaluating the minus first before the um, addition. 17 minus eight, that's what? Nine, positive nine. Now nine plus six, that's it gives us 15. Okay, all right. So on to the next. So let's see in what order. Let's try, let's go from right to, let's go from right to left. So that's eight, eight multiplied by two. Eight multiplied by two, that's 16, right? So 24 divided by 16. I should just use a calculator. That's 24 divided by 16. That's 1.5, right? Okay, so let's see if that's what we're going to get. 1.5, beautiful. Now, what if we had the other way? If we had it the other way, That's a six, right? So starting with starting with a multiplication, I get a twenty-four, and then starting with division, I get a six. I just need to confirm that, guys. Oh, sorry, it's one point five. Starting with the multiplication. Now let's remove the parentheses and see which one Python actually does. So that's the six. You see, beginning with the division. So it goes from left to right in this case. Where division comes before it, it goes the natural way for Python, you know, going from left to right. Okay, now we get on with that to the next. Which one of the three, you know, comes first and then which one follows for the last? Plus division and multiplication. Now, Let's look at it just going from left to right. So that's 10 plus 15, 25. 25 divided by 2, 7.5 times 4. That should be 30, right? Let's take it again 10 plus 15, 25. Oh, 25 divided by 2, that's 12.5. Sorry about that, guys. 12.5. Now, 12.5 times 4, that's 50. So let's see if we get 50. No, there must be a problem. And let's try going by, you know, this um, guideline here. So I'm going to have the division first, division first, then the multiplication, and the result is added to 10. 15 divided by two, that is 7.5, 7.5 times four. That is now um, 30, then 30 plus 10. That's why we have 40. So I hope you understand guys, division, then do the multiplication, then um, the addition. Right, now the next is something um, that's quite different from what we've been using. So we're going to use the math model here, and from there we get the the square roots, you know, from from that uh, model. 
So I would import that, I'll import maths. from math, so not the entire thing, but just, you know, one, um, a, I'm going to import, you know, a class from there, from math, import square root, because I'll need that, my purpose. Right, so, So use the square root, it takes, you know, the, the, there's this argument one here, which is the number whose square root we wish to, you know, obtain. So SQRT in parentheses 144, right? So it does, how does it go, guys? Let's go left to right and see what we have. Five, then it evaluates square root of 144, which is 12, 12 by 12 times, five times 12, that is 60, 60 divided by three, 20, 20 plus four, 24. Let's see if we get 24. All right, so in this case, there could be some you know, coincidence, right? Or probably not. Now let's go, let's use the, the you know, the, guy that was given at the beginning of this lesson. So I'm going to evaluate, do the square root first, Python does the square root rather. Then the result is divided by three, which is then multiplied by five. Then the result is added to four. So let's take it guys and see. Square root of 144 is 12. 12 divided by three is four. Now four times five is what? Guys, 20, 20 plus four, 24. All right, so that's, that's um, going by our guide, the guide given, then you will arrive at the correct answer. Okay, so I'll just comment this out. And we'll come to the other one. Print. Print ants. So guys, let's 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 look at this together. Again, whether it is square root or the exponent, it doesn't really matter in this case. I'm just going to evaluate this. I'm going to evaluate, get what is returned from this, then the answer will be kind of kept, but not used until I have now done what? Three raised to the power of two. The answer obtained from that will now be used to multiply the square root of 144. So first square root of 144, then three raised to the power of two, that is nine. So I have, you know here is 12. So 12 times nine, that is, I think 108. So let's see, but that's it guys. That returns the right answer or the expected result. All right, then I think we're making progress. I'm just gonna call these ans and print. So we print ans, which is first now. So guys, this is the first time we'll encounter this. Truncated division and the division, which comes before which in terms of um, order of um, evaluation. Good, I am going to um, do truncated division or rather Python will do truncated um, division before it does the typical or normal division. You understand? So it's not going to be four divided by two and then used to um, divide 19, taking only the whole number. No, would simply, 
Python will do 19 divided by four, taking only the whole number and discarding the remainder. So 19 divided by four, that should be four, which is 16, four times four, 16. So this should be four. Then the four, you know, we're not using the remainder. The four, sorry guys, the four divided by two. So four divided by two is two. So it's just something like this. Just like this, yeah. We'll see. That's two. Now it doesn't matter if I take off these brackets here. It's still two. But if I do it the other way round, four divided by two first, and then what I get, I used to divide 19 and I take only the whole number. Let's see, there might be some coincidence there. So um, four divided by two is two. 19 divided by two, that's not it, it's nine, right? Let's see. So that's it, the answer there is nine, but that's not the way Python will evaluate expression here. It will be, it, it will be done this way. This first, then divided by two. All right, then um, making progress, move on to the next. I'll just take this off, or I would ask you to, you know, see what this is going to give you. So this should just be an assignment or something, homework for you. I'm just going to end this lesson after this, after we've got this, um, the answer to this. Now, how will Python evaluate that expression there? Statement there, 20, now, you might be wondering, what is this? Again, this is a modulus operator. It takes the remainder. The remainder is what is obtained, rather. The remainder is returned for use. Why this is the truncated division. So following the division operation, the whole number is taken and not the remainder. So this returns remainder, this return the whole, returns the whole number, and this is the typical division. So devices and gives you a floating point number. You understand? So now let's see how this is done. First, guys, if I had the modulus and the truncated division, Python will, will do the truncated division first, then it does the mod, modulus division and then divides by two. So seven divided by four, seven divided by four, that's one right one we're not taking the remainder then 20 divided by one what's the remainder remainder zero so since i have zero zero divided by two your guess is as good as mine that returns a zero Do you understand so zero divided by any if i have zero divided by a number it will still be zero now guys i urge you to do this last one here and see what the output will be, okay? All right, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in our next video. The next video we'll start, we'll uh, look at, we'll discuss the collections in, in uh, Moodle, you know, um, these buckets that do not hold single values, but collections of values. So we'll look at, and there are four of them we'll discuss in the next video. Lists, tuples, dictionaries, and sets. I'm really, really looking forward to you know, um, having that discussion in the next video. See you guys, and do have a great day. Bye.